So hey there, fellows. This here is a wonderful car. Though after that last experiment, the engine ain't feeling too good. It was under a hell of a lot of stress. We blew a head gasket, and so the engine needs a bit of love. And well, since we'll be tearing it apart anyway, we decided, why not conduct an experiment while we're at it? You might remember how a few years ago we made some wooden pistons. And well, with them being wooden, they almost immediately got barbecued. As for today's experiment, I suggest we use something a bit more durable to make us a set of pistons. Like a hard plastic, for example. Now we do need to open up the engine first, so let's do that, see what's up with the pistons, and then find the right kind of plastic and make us a set of plastic pistons. Let's do this. Okay, fellas, you asked where our baseball caps are at, and now we've finally got them. Look at this straight brim that you can get in black or red. The quality is fantastic. It'll keep your head warm in the winter and cool in the summer, which makes it especially useful for a guy like me. Right, comrades? You'll find a link in the video description. Get yourself one of these and enjoy wearing it. Fabricating plastic pistons. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Okay, fellas, things are looking pretty good. We've removed the pistons from the motor. There is nothing horribly wrong with them. Well, with three of them at least. The fourth one does have a few scratches due to the engine overheating. No matter. At least the cylinders haven't sustained any damage. Anyway, so all of this begs the question. What sort of plastic should we use for making them pistons? Initial thoughts? Well, first you've got fluoroplastic, and then there's caprolon. But you see, Caprolon is a very durable material. The internet even says it's comparable to steel in that regard. As for fluoroplastic, it works very well in areas with friction. It copes very well with that sort of thing. But it's afraid of high temperatures. And it is going to get hot in there. I guess this was kind of a no-brainer. Looks like our best bet is gonna be Caprolon after all. I mean, the cylinder walls are gonna be covered in an oil film that'll keep it from sticking and wearing out prematurely, so I reckon we shouldn't see any deep scratches. That's what the oil film is in there for in the first place, right? Okay, so here we've got some material. We can use it for... We can? We will go ahead and place it onto a lathe and proceed to machine us some pistons. Let's do it. And here we have the pistons, fellows. These are looking pretty nice. We've got them all machined up. And, uh, yeah, they look all right. Now, one thing we didn't make is a groove for the snap rings that hold the pins in place. That keep them from shifting left to right. But look. Honestly, I can't even get this out now. After ever so slightly pushing it in. It's going to be a really tight fit. And that's a good thing. It means we don't even need to install any snap rings. My guess is that this won't result in anything terrible happening. Again, they are going to be sitting very tightly. All of this should work beautifully. Okay, let's continue with assembly. And fire up that engine. Okay, fellas, the engine is now fully assembled. 
We've got them plastic pistons in there, the piston rings and connecting rods and all of that. Looking good. And now it is time to start the car. Hit it. Keep it up. We're almost there. Wait, Sergey. Let me squirt a bit of fuel in there. You're not gonna believe it, but it is running. It works! Holy cow! What do you know? On plastic pistons. Caprolon, to be exact. Seems to be misfiring. Why aren't all four cylinders firing? Well, at the very least, it's running. Those are some positive results. You didn't mismatch the leads, did you? The Volga has a different firing order. One, two, four, three. Shouldn't be doing that. The driver knowing the firing order is the key to success. Now, what did I just tell you? One, two, four, three. Let it rip. Okay, so now it's really running. Well, I mean... It's working. Yes, it is. You see, the thing about Caprolon is that even variations in ambient temperature can lead it to change size. Which is what appears to have happened. Do you smell that? That's burnt plastic. Yep, Caprolon. Wonderful. It must have expanded until it filled the entire space, until the gaps were like gone completely, and that resulted in a stalled engine. Them pistons got too big. And now they're jammed. That's why when they put together racing engines, like the really high horsepower turbocharged ones, they tend to increase the clearances, to allow for more piston expansion than usual. Otherwise it just wouldn't be able to do its thing without damaging the cylinders. In this case, that principle seems to have failed. It appeared to be sitting pretty freely in there. Right, so we've let it sit, though it hasn't completely cooled down. It's been maybe three or four minutes. Oh, it's getting even warmer. Let's turn it over and check whether the pistons are jammed in there. Oh, really? That appears to be the case. I think we broke something. The next morning. Night, fellas, we left it alone for the night. The engine is ice cold, naturally. It's nice and cool. What do you think? Are the pistons still stuck? Let's try and see. They have unstuck themselves. I was saying that they didn't necessarily stick. They merely expanded. Oh my, what seems to be the problem? No, it works. Let's see how long it lasts. Look at how it's shaking. That's some high-quality plastic. Oh, there we go. It works okay at higher revs. But as soon as I bring them down, it can barely even keep going. And that's it. Seized. Open the gate. One curious thing I'd like to point out to you, fellas. So this is the second time we are starting the car on plastic pistons. See what's up? And you've got that distinct scent of burnt caprolon. So it burns, 
But it works. Blit. It burns, but it works. Something's up in there. We can't have a look just yet. We don't even really want to tear the engine apart while it's still able to start. Even after we took the pistons off, they were a certain size while on the lathe. But for whatever reason, they didn't fit. Which meant we had to machine them some more to make it easier to squeeze them in. And they still got jammed once we put some heat into them. Okay, I suggest we try waiting some more again until it completely cools off. And then we take another crack at it. And we'll keep going right up until we can't get it to start anymore. And that's when we're gonna open it up and have a look. And so the wait begins. It's not easy to cool off that big a chunk of metal. So we're gonna be cooling it with some running water. There's really no other way to do this. And we've successfully cooled the engine down with some running water. All it took was 15 minutes. It's nice and cool. And it's even turning over. Stop. Wait a second. It seems to be turning over a bit too easily. Can you pump some gas in? It seems way too free to rotate. I take it there's probably one intact piston left in there. Yeah, let's keep trying. But why though? It should work on just one cylinder. How do we make this work? Right, so we were able to start at three, at the very least two and a half times. And we're about to make another attempt. Hit it, Sergei. running. That's it. That didn't last long, despite the running water. This thing is quick to warm up. Why are you covering your noses? Nothing to breathe? The camera crew is doing this right now. The smoke most definitely smells of burnt plastic. That's fried caprolon. Fourth attempt. Come on now. Yes. Fifth try, after letting it cool off. Pour it in there. While they're cold, the engine is happy to even run at low revs. But that'll end as soon as it's warmed up. What an awful stench! It's seized. Open the gate! Look at all that smoke! The pistons are burning. The plastic's melting away, burning and creating smoke. We'll let it cool off and have a look. So we've decided to remove the plugs while the motor is cooling off, see how they're feeling. Now take a close look at the plug from cylinder number three. Looks like it got smashed by the piston. How this happened? Honestly, we have no idea. Perhaps this one is slightly taller, then again, nah. We made all of them using a template, so they should be identical. Even the insulator is broken. So that was a serious hit. Come on now. You can do it, come on. Go on, we can do this. Nope. I agree, that's one cylinder left standing. And now we do a compression test. I've stuck the gauge in there. We'll start by checking up on cylinder number one. Hit it. Enough? Yeah, that is very healthy. Cylinder number two. That'll do. Zero. 
<laughs> Three and a half atmospheres. <laughs> You can stop now. We are not going to get this engine to run. So it's time to remove the cylinder head and see what's left of the pistons. Let's get stuck right into it. And so after removing the cylinder head, we witness a lovely picture indeed. This is marvelous. Those pistons are roasted. And all of them differently. The one in cylinder number one looks like a bowl. Number two isn't that bad. In number three you've got another bowl. I think it was cylinder three where the spark plug took a hit. We still have no clue what exactly did that. As for number four, that one is also fried. But the burn marks are peculiar. It's as if water was making it into the cylinders. In any case, cylinders number one and four can't really see it from here. But they've burned right down to the lower ring. In one spot. Interestingly enough. Okay, fellas, we've got them out of there, it's all good. The Conrads are all slimy. That's always a good sign. The excess heat twisted the cylinder head. Very nice. Anyway, so look here. So here's the piston from cylinder number one. And what do we see? Here's where it burned through to the lower ring. Just like I said. It's amazing how the rings are flush. Is that even possible with plastic pistons? I'm joking. Of course they're gonna do that. Now let's have a closer look. You can see the ring making its way around and ascending. Apparently the plastic was getting up to such high temperature that it wasn't so much burning as it was deforming. These grooves are no longer parallel to each other. Yeah, this is what the piston now looks like. The burns sort of lean into one side. So that there is piston number one. Let's examine number two, where we had zero compression. What's amazing here is that the upper piston ring is moving around. The second one is stuck. The oil ring is also free to move around. But for some reason we lost all compression, and I don't have any answers as to why. It might be that while the pistons were still in there they got stuck, and they were jammed inside their respective grooves. I don't see any sort of scratches. So in terms of friction, the plastic worked as it should. No damage done to the piston or the cylinder. Number three. Not all compression was lost, but do you see this? What do you guys think this is? That's what's left of the ring. Piston ring number one. There's just a tiny piece left in the groove, and the rest has melted away. That's what probably hit the spark plug. That was one hell of a hit. It even took out the ceramic bit. We did, of course, replace it after that. And the engine was trying to start. But ultimately, it changed its mind. The oil ring on this one is smothered in some kind of goo. Some kind of plastic. Must have been the caprolon melting away. The second ring is stuck. Leaving the oil ring to essentially work as a compression ring. And finally, we have number four. Piston number four looks really nice. It has just started to burn. Like, barely even. It's the lightest of the bunch. Number one was working hard. And number three. Looking at number four, we see burn marks, meltage. And there are a bunch of white spots. Judging by the emulsion, I take it some water might have been leaking in. And the droplets of water might have been cooling these areas down. Not allowing this one to get roasted like those others. I mean the ones in cylinders number one and three. I mean the rings here look like they're in decent enough condition. Though they're also stuck. Despite us even making these grooves big enough to ensure movement. The oil ring is moving, but the others are not. Oh wait, this one is giving in. And you can see how while I'm turning it, 
All sorts of crap is falling out. All of that plastic is turned into dirt. And that, my friends, is how the plastic pistons fared. The funny part is that they actually worked in the first place. We were able to start the engine a good five times. Then it was trying to fire up on two cylinders that were showing about three atmospheres of compression, but after that it died. The motor ain't gonna run with no compression. So these pistons are fried, but we got it to start five times. Unlike on those wooden ones. Now let's take a look at the cylinders themselves. See what's up with them. They look exactly the same. Was it number three where stuff was falling apart? I don't see any scratches or any other sort of damage in there. It's all looking good. The plastic pistons did no damage. It's all good. And that's even despite the ring in cylinder number three disintegrating. I gather it was making its way up and had no way of going down, slipping into the gap. Though I think it could have gotten in there. Instead, though, it smashed the plug. Whatever, I don't mind that it hit the spark plug. What matters is the cylinder is okay. We'll be able to put this motor back together and get everything right. And that was a demonstration of plastic pistons. That was an interesting one, I think. The engine runs, but not for long. And that's all I have for you. Watch us, subscribe, send in those comments and suggestions, give us a big thumbs up. All right, catch you later.